Okay, today I'm going to be working with a double pillow. It's not a false pillow or a faux pillow. It's going to be a double pillow. I want to get a backlit, uh, backlit look from the from the the painting, but I don't want all the white popping through where I don't want it. So I tried this a few weeks ago with pretty good success, and I think I needed to sit down for a minute and actually explain to you what my thinking is with this. First thing I'm going to put down is my my standard uh, my standard pillow paint. This is PPG Multi Pro and eggshell. It's my white pillow. Nice little puddle down in the middle. This is a six inch tile. It's a, it's a good demo. It's a good way to practice this. Now, my black pillow lately has been the Sherwin-Williams Color to Glow Go in uh, tricorn black. I'm gonna take that and I pour it along the outside. Now, I took that out of my big jar and put it into this silicone cup so I could control it a little bit better. I just want to get a nice swath so that I'm not dealing with a lot of white, but at the same time, I'm able to get that, that faux pillow that I'm looking for. You can see the consistency in this, actually for a pillow, is pretty thin. That's the 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 downside to the color to go color to go uh, paints is they can they can be a little bit thin. This is more the consistency of, that I go for with my with my paints. So that's down. You're going to see that it's going to start you're going to start coming off the sides pretty quickly. I may have put too much of the the white pillow down, but it'll make it work. Okay, geez, my a little bit of a little bit of a head thing going right now. Now, the color I really want to see come out of this and see uh, is going to be Cuneg, Herneconum Nicolazzo Gold, and I'm going to I'm going to put that along with another color here in just a second. I'm going to put down. That's a little bit thick. What I do in that case, I have a little bit of Joe Sonia varnish. And literally, it's, I mean, that much. Not much at all. Um, mix it in. I have to be careful. When I'm painting, I really don't want a lot of bubbles, especially when I'm doing a, especially when I'm doing a faux pillow. Or, yeah, well, it is a faux pillow this time, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put black on top of this. Okay, and I don't want to introduce a lot of bubbles here. So, okay. This stuff is gold at this point, besides its name, uh, because it is going away. I've talked about this before. Kernakernum Nicolas Gold is one of my favorites, and I'm very sad to see it go away. It's not going away for the reasons you might think. There's a component within the paint that they can't get, or can't get enough of. So, um, yeah, I did get some bubbles in there. Um, so. It's going away for that reason. So, it, you know, who knows? If it comes available again, it'll probably come back. So what I'm doing there is I'm just blowing down to get some of these bubbles taken care of because I got just that little tiny bit of spraying and I didn't do it really vigorously. I just wanted to incorporate that stuff in. And I really don't want these bubbles interfering with the paint. Interfering with the what we're doing here. This is pretty good. This is Indian yellow. Yes, Indian yellow hue. It's a golden product. And this was one of my the the high flows. So it started out as a liquid, and that's that's actually a little bit thin for what I'm doing here. But um, I'm going to roll with it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put that along this corner. I'm just creating my, what I want to pull up. 
this is the colors I want to see come up after I do my faux pillow and my swipe. That much, just a little bit in the center there. Now, several things I could do is I could give myself a contrasting color or I will go contrasting color. Um, those are two two paints. So I need to get some sparkle in there. So I think I'm gonna go with with Lakeside. Lakeside started out as a pigment. I wetted it with a little bit of Gelsonia varnish just to make it a little bit more liquid. I try to go more towards the paste side of things so it's not really thin. And then add my normal pouring medium, which is uh, these days is Vaspar Ultra. Uh, it's a the, the base three, which, so it dries fairly clear, clear, and then just a little bit of uh, varathane, polyurethane, triple thick, and that for consistency's sake. I'm gonna add quite a bit of this to it. You can see. That color is absolutely, that's, see, that's, that's more like my consistency. I don't know if you can see that. It's more like my consistency that I like to see, which is a little on the thickish side. So let's see where we want to put that. I actually want a little bit more of that because I really do want it to peek through. And being a little bit sloppy is not really what I want to do, but at the same time, it doesn't matter. It's not crucial. It's not crucial because this is all going to get covered over. So that should be enough. Now I'm going to put together a little bit of a little bit of my my black, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I put a little bit of my uh, this is Amsterdam oxide black, and you can see I put a. That's at least a teaspoonful, if not just a little bit more. Uh, and I'm using my, the same, this is my, uh, yeah, uh, my Vaspar Ultra and uh, Ferrothane polyurethane pouring medium that I was talking about. You can see the consistency there. That's done it at basically a three to one ratio. I say basically, not because it's it's really eyeballed because I use a I use a small silicone ladle to mix mine or to measure mine and I put you know three ladles of the the ultra Vaspar ultra with uh, one ladle of the uh, the varathane polyurethane and that's just the, the varathane varathane is just for consistency make sure I get that nice uh, fluid consistent without being too thin because I, I have that, I'm going to put in three parts of this. And I want enough of it so that I can do a decent coverage on this. So I'm filling this thing up. Okay. So you can see. Let's do that. Let's seal it up. You can see basically how much it is compared to, I mean, it is definitely three to one. I didn't measure this when it comes to the paints. It's like, I eyeball that a lot. Uh, it's about the, the consistency and for me, the density of the paint, how density as far as color density, how much pigmenta pigmentation I get. I'm having to do this nice and slow because I really don't want to introduce uh, too many bubbles to it, but I think it's not, it's going to be a lost cause. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to really mix this. You know, you saw how much I, I uh, excuse my uhs, but how much I, I stirred the other colors and I still introduced bubbles. So it really takes very little to introduce bubbles. Trying to make sure you scrape around the outsides, get all this pouring medium in there, get it nice and incorporated, and not doing it as vigorously as I might if I'm going to use this tomorrow. 
I'm you know just that little bit I've done I have introduced bubbles so we are probably going to have problems with little specks that will be fine so there that is now all this is is a pastry cutter I any tool you get that's kind of like this will work for this process or for this purpose I'm going to put down that's just a little bit thickish Put a little bit more varnish in there and yeah, see if I can thin it down just a tad. Some people have asked me before what I what I'm doing when I reach across. It's just a it's just a uh, container with a little bit of water, and I do that so that when I go back later to clean up I don't get that first stage of drying and it makes cleanup just so much more easy, more simple so that's my purpose for that you know I get I get working and I forget people are watching to learn I don't but you know I assume that people you know this is this is pretty worn stuff so you know why share it all but it's Kind of important. I do remember when I was first learning how I would find artists out there that did a really good job of explaining things. Uh, I think probably the one I used the most uh, it was was between uh, the first recipe I got was off of, uh, off of uh, Karen Durskin's channel at, at uh, Waterfall Acrylics. She did a wonderful job giving recipes, but consistencies and consistencies and uh, recipes that were easy for me to find and easy to understand came originally from Jody uh, Flynn, the painted uh, the 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 painted uh, oh, what is she, uh, dreamer, and Jody has taken a little bit of hiatus right now. And yeah, that's fine. You know, this is one of the things, you know, doing doing YouTube full time, uh, which I do. And it's, I do it mostly because I'm retired, guys. And being retired, I have lots of time on my hand. All I'm doing is I'm just getting a nice coat across this. So that when I do my swipe, swipe across, I don't have to worry so much about am I getting an even, even swipe. Now, there's a little too much white down there for me. It's going to cause me problems. Uh, if I don't get full coverage. So I'm just gonna turn it over. I'm not gonna rush it. I'm just gonna do a nice, even coat across the top. The Empress of this style, as far as I'm concerned, you know, there are a lot of people that do similar styles is uh, Jessica Winterstrom. Her, her, uh, that's, she's the first person I saw do the trans, do the, uh, the faux pillow. And as far as I'm concerned, she does it the uh, best, but I'm a big fan. So if you haven't seen Jessica's, you know, Jessica's channel, you gotta, you gotta go check it out because she's amazing. Bit more on here there's so many bubbles here but this is for demonstration most likely this is a lot of this is going to go off I'm having you add just a little bit more faux pillow for those of you who are fairly uh, fairly familiar with how this works it's okay I'll leave a I'll leave a, uh, a log down there you can skip ahead to when I finally get to the part that you're most interested in so you'll be able to find it and ladies and gentlemen, this is going out real time. So I'm very conscious about how much time it takes to do this. Because, you know, people's time is valuable. This is not a quick process. 
My paints are just a tad bit thick, so it's taking more time to get this covered up. So this is kind of an experiment for me. I had I had a, a, a subscriber ask me not too long ago, why don't you just put down, you know, the color pillow you want? And I'll show that to you in just a few minutes as to why. Rather stubborn. I should think this is going to be an awfully lot of paint on here. So the reality of it is probably for a piece that I would actually keep. I'm not gonna scrape this because you know it inevitably has has a purpose. But who knows? We'll see. That little tiny bit of white there has to be covered up. So I probably we should play with this a little bit more and thin off that thin off this stuck uh, this carbon black. Where's an excite black? I'd have to look. I think it's carbon black. Um, as I just picked up, picked up one of the black, blacks and filled it without really looking for the label. Okay, finally got it. Now all that paint, it is now down to about here. So I used quite a bit of that black, which is problematic. We'll see. Okay, it's covered. I got a lot of, I got a lot of, so, uh, a lot of uh, bubbles there. <laughs> which, by the way, will be a problem. You can see some of my colors starting to poke through. So, next thing. Just for now, I'm going to load up a palette knife and I'm going to do a swipe. This is very small, so my swipe is not going to be very large. Let's see what swiper I want to use. These palette knives, I got to tell you, I uh, when I started collecting them, oh, I only need a couple. Well, silly me, I didn't just need a couple. I got a whole bunch of them. And I collected them over the time that I've been painting. Now, I'm gonna be using, gonna be using a black and teal uh, cell activator. And we'll see if I actually get to the teal. I probably will, because it, it's uh, complementary to my uh, to my undercoat. A lot of those are poking up now. Not really what I wanted, because I really only want the color where I want it. And that's a whole charm of this. You get you get colors popping through that you really actually want to see. So this is Unicorn. Unicorn has a, the face value is blue, a kind of a baby blue, but it has an undertone of violet and a little bit of gold in there. This is a TLP color, mixed the same way as I talked about earlier. And it's gonna go down on top to bring some things out. So I'm gonna coat the back of this, of my swiping tool with the, the, this is, is carbon black, and it's a tryout carbon black. It's what, I, what I've been using lately for my cell activator. It reacts very quickly, and I am enamored with it at the moment. Love my Amsterdam products, but at this point, at this moment, I am very excited about this, uh, about these uh, tryout paints as cell activators. So this is uh, this is teal, and it's again another one of the triarts. And I'm just going to put a little tiny bit on here, give some support to that 
to that uh, unicorn that I'm going to put on top of that. You probably can't see this because I've got it off to the side. And finally, the unicorn. This is really kind of, this is more, this is more the consistency I, consistency I usually work with. Um, and it, it goes down fairly thick, but it does level out quickly. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this over, get a nice swipe, something I can work with so I can do my scoop and drags. So here we go. I've got a lot of paint down here, and uh, I'll let that develop for just a second. What I just did is I went and got a rag to uh, clean off my tool. I don't want to contaminate with any other colors until I'm ready for them. Oh, that, is, that is very pretty there. I don't see a lot of cells in that range, so I'm going to put down just a little bit more. Smaller tools I can get in there and get a little more detailed. Load it up exactly the same way. some more to work with. At this point, you can see some cells pop, popping up. You can see some of my QNAG popping up through the bubbles, which, you know, it's not a bad thing, but it's not really what I wanted, because my whole point is to try to get my, try to keep control of where my white comes through with this. Lessons learned so far. Don't put down so much of the, don't put so much of the white pillow down. The lessons learned are just as important for me as success, because that's how we, I get to success, is by doing these practice tiles. I do a lot of tiles. Okay, I've got some cells going there. Nothing's happening right there, but we'll see what we can do with that. So I'm gonna go down, you can see where my, my uh, you can see where my Kornakonum Nicolazzo gold is, and my yellow. So I'm gonna go down, and put a little deep there. Do a little bit of scooping and dragging. Generally speaking, when you scoop and drag, you're just going to go under the color and pull it out. And all you're trying to do is create from what's not there. Pull up only the colors you want to see. That is the point. <clears throat> Let's get some more of that to come out. I think I've got enough to work with there. I've got some nice, some undercolor that can already see. Now my, the color difference is gonna be not as dramatic as it would be if I didn't have so much paint down here. Uh, Cause I'm gonna have to spend more than I'd like to. And because there's so much here, I'm most likely gonna have a lot of spillage. I mean, I already do around the, the tile. 
So I'm gonna pull this up, clean off my clean off my space, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I get a little bit of cleaning. I got put my put my paints away, got them covered up, got my tools out of the way, so that when I spin, it doesn't go all over the place. Now I'm gonna do some real soft spinning here because. I'm just looking at it. You can see how much paint I have down here, but it's going to open everything up. So a nice soft spin to start with. It only starts to see things starting to, starting to open up. I'm going to slow this down slowly because if you stop it suddenly, your cells can get wonky on you. I'm try to center this a little better so that it's not getting totally wonky. See, the thing you need to remember with paint, centrifugal force is our friend. But you must always keep in mind that right there in the middle, it's not, it's not spinning as much paint off as it is out the side. And the centrifugal force, I mean, that's all it's about. It's, if you've ever done at the fair, the, the art where you, you, you squirt it out and it's going fast and you end up with this basic splatter it's an interesting effect we're doing basically the same thing with that uh with this uh but uh you're trying to control it a little bit more so you can see i'm getting my, a lot of my carnacinomes coming out right here and that yellow that indian yellow hue is is playing its part and the teal down underneath is playing its part over here and i'm afraid i'm going to lose a lot of it is some right there too is that uh a unicorn and if at this point you can see what I was talking about the unicorn will shift will shift in color and so it's very interesting so I wish I could walk away from this right now but it, I'll show you in a second it, why I can't because if I did that is you know, I can't see it now. That, that is way too much paint. That's, it's about an eighth of an inch. I probably could take a chance on it and it would be fine, but I'm going to spin just a little bit more because it's, this paint was really kind of thick. I'm going to talk about the things I learned with this in just a few minutes. You know, most people don't know this. If you do, if you haven't read my if you haven't read my description, I am a former. Be careful how I say that because I get taken to task on that. I'm a retired Marine. I spent uh, I spent a career as a Marine, and if you've never known a Marine before, well, colorful language is part of the gig, and I can get I can get on my getting on a roll and so I really have to monitor it folks because I really don't want to offend anybody because I don't mean to be offensive so yes my time in the Marine Corps has made an indelible mark on my language skills okay let's do a little bit more spinning I'm spinning only in one direction at this point I usually try to pay attention to that and give it equal time on both sides we do that for two reasons the cells lose their shape if you spin in one direction too much. They kind of go wonky in that direction. All right, we're going to debrief on this here in just a few minutes. I had my loves and my disloves. Is that a word? My loves and hates on this. Hate is an awful strong word, but. It is a word that is very descriptive that everyone understands. Okay, the reason why I worry about that is if you don't get enough paint off, you end up with a problem of uh, drying problems. You get, you get uh, the paint will craze and possibly even crack. And with a white tile, that's not a good look. It will take it all the way down to that white. You don't want to do that. I don't like that look. So the reason I'm always very careful to make sure I get enough paint off of it. 
but I love working with I love working with tiles because uh, it's it's a good practice uh, substrate and what I do with them after the fact is I, I, I resin them and I sell them. Here in short order, I'm going to have I'm going to have my uh, storefront up and running. Should have been up and running long before this. Okay, I'm going to bring you down. I'm going to let you see what we have here, and I'm going to point out some things that I like and some things I don't like. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I want to show you some of the things I love about this, and some of the things are problematic for me. Um, I still don't know, you can see with the, the light, that it's got some thick parts. And when you have thick parts and it sinks, your, your chance of having your, your painting chained while it's drying is high. So most likely you're going to have some things that will change with this. Um, looking down here, things that I dislike first. If you look right here, you can see where my black has actually fractured. It's starting to pull apart. You can actually, so when you come close, you can actually see the grains of the black. That's not a good look for me. Uh, I can see some purposes for it, but if I have purposes for it, I want to. I want to be do it. I want it to be done in on purpose, and that's because probably the the black didn't sit long enough so that the uh, well, pouring medium and the pigment uh, were able to incorporate more. That's, you know, I knew that was probably going to happen. So, um, other things that I, I'm not wild about. This up here, that was not where I placed it. That was the Kernakonome that came up. I have a love-hate with relationship with that. Um, it adds to the look. Uh, there is definitely on the plus side, there is definitely some flow to this. The composition is a horrible, uh, but I put down too much paint on this and that's as simple as it gets. So let me um, turn it around to the way it should have been in the first place. And let's take a closer look. Uh, don't let me get any closer than that. You can see my gold, or the Kernakano Michelazzo gold, has fractured just a tad, which doesn't make sense. And that's actually the Indian yellow there. And you can see where the Indian yellow hue and the uh, Kranek and the Nicolazzo gold blend beautifully. There's that, there's that uh, uh, unicorn. It looks purple there, but it, depending on which angle you're looking at it, it'll go more blue. So it's actually one of my, my new most favorites. Okay, the cell structure on this, it's held up. The amount of paint I put down on this was probably enough for a bigger piece, like uh, 12 by 12 rather than six by six. So that's lesson learned. Did the white and the black work together? It did. Uh, I didn't get as much of the white like down here poking through, but this has not stopped uh, releasing its bubbles. So, you know, we've gotta, we've gotta be patient with this. So I'm going to try this again on a larger canvas, and I'll share that with you. Probably different uh, color scheme, but yes. Um, I'm hoping that you found something useful with this, and that uh, you're able to use this in your own art. I'm going to go down and show you just a little bit more. Overall, this is about a, out of a scale of 10. I'd say this is a good solid mm, five and a half, six. Would I scrape it? Depending on how it dries, uh, I we'll see. Uh, right now, I'd say no. Uh, if it were to dry bad poorly, I would just soak it and take the skin off of it. Okay, I want to thank you very much for being here today, and I hope that you have a, a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.